Hello, everybody, and welcome to um, today's Taylor Tuesdays. My name is Dr. Andrew Schneider. I am a user um, a member of the Taylor um, Medical GPO, also an investor, and I'm happy to have you join me here today. Um, with me is Dr. Neil Lonke, who is our, our guest uh, presenter today, and we'll hear from him in just a moment about um, a fantastic product, and I'll tell you more about that in a second. Before we do, let me just give you a little bit about Taylor Medical. Um, all these webinars, we do a webinar twice a month, every the, the first and the third Tuesday of the month, and all of those are archived on our website. So if you go to taylormedical.com, look at the top, right where those arrows are, and you'll see my webinars, and uh, you'll see the webinars, and you'll be able to see all the webinars we've done in the past, some great um, presentations, some great speakers, and all of which can help to um, level up your practice. Finally, um, what is Taylor Medical? If you're not a member, I strongly suggest that you become a member. First of all, it's free. Um, you do not, there's no cost to join Taylor Medical. And so all you need to do to see if it, it will benefit you is get your latest um, invoice from wherever you're ordering products from, send it over to admin at taylormedical.com and they'll do a cost analysis. And they will just as easily, um, they'll very easily provide you back with what you would spend as a Taylor Medical member. I can tell you that since I joined Taylor Medical on um, most of my office supplies and uh, medical products, I've saved about 25%. And that's a uh, pretty good savings for the you know top of the line that really is going to affect the bottom of the line. So really, um, if you're not a member, it's free. There's no obligation. It's definitely important to um, definitely important to um, to become a member. So now I'm having a slide issues. Okay, Neil, your slides are not on here. That's a problem. My slides are not on here. I'm doing, I'm gonna do a screen share. Oh, you're doing a screen share. Okay. Yeah. All right, my apologies. So okay. um, I'm going to um, now introduce Dr. Neil Lonke. Um, Dr. Neil Lonke is with a company called Histologics. Um, a little bit about Histologics. Histologics is a manufacturer of products, bringing a simple and gentle approach to wound hygiene, debridement and tissue sampling for anatomic culture and molecular pathology. Their chylon coated devices utilize a patented versatile medical fabric developed by Histologics that's comprised of uniquely shaped hooks woven into a nylon fabric that can function as a gentle brush bristles to clean wounds or when pressed firmly into tissue convert into a array of micro curettes that can biopsy or debride the tissue using friction. The hook array can automatically trap specimens the tip will detach or transport to the to the lab. Um, I've been fortunate to um, been to to use um, some of Dr. Lonke's products. I've used the soft K cot and the soft K ret um, to do to help me with some of my debridements. And I can tell you that um, I don't see uh, another product that really effectively removes the biofilm and um, allows that nice bleeding granular base. Um, than using these products. It's painless for the patient and it's easy to use. Um, the patient actually likes to see it because, you know, you come out with, they come out with them with a blade and they're a little apprehensive. You come out with them with what essentially looks like Velcro and it's, um, it's much more approachable for the patients. Um, to me, it's been a game changer. I've seen um, wounds improve just because I think I'm getting a better debridement from it. I'm getting, um, I'm getting a, a nice bleeding um, granular base and that's gonna lead to healing tissue. And I see him a couple weeks later and I, lo and behold, that wound is, is smaller. So um, I am a, a proud and happy user and I look forward to you learning more about Dr. Lonke and Dr. Lonke's products. And I'm gonna pass it along to uh, you, Dr. Lonke, for a presentation. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Dr. Schneider. I appreciate it and I know you're a busy man, so I appreciate you taking the time to come and share that experience with us. Uh, the intro was really kind of great because it gave you a kind of a glimpse into the talk. I'm going to share my screen now. 
uh, and um, we're going to go right to the presentation. So um, I'm going to go to presentation mode, turn off the capture. Okay, I'm Dr. Lonke, as Dr. Uh, Schneider introduced me. I'm an OBGYN by training, and I've been really leaning into the wound care side of medical practice for the last three years. Um, I saw a real gap in the uh, technology, and I thought uh, maybe there's something that could do a debridement that patients wouldn't fear, yet was quite effective and had to meet the needs of a lot of spectrum of providers. Today's talk is really geared towards you, the podiatrist who is doing surgical debridement, but may have staff that's not doing surgical debridement. Let's say you're assigning staff in a, in a skilled nursing facility or some assisted living facility, and you want them to keep the wound clean. So there's a lot of versatility to what I'm going to show you. So we started out in OBGYN trying to figure out if we could do cervical biopsies a little more gentler, but take tissue away from the cervix during a colposcopy workup which is basically uh, the workup after abnormal te screening tests like HPV tests and pap smears. And we said, you know, this shouldn't be something patients fear. Can it be a compassionate colposcopy? So we trademarked it. And for people who go through it, women, uh, you know, they say it's, it's like torture. So I say, can you imagine gentle torture, which is kind of an oxymoron, right? But this is uh, transforming women's health care. There's been close to 2 million cases in the United States now in just about every practice setting in the country. Um, so we're, it, we're trying to replace either reusable, reusable or uh, disposable stainless steel cutting. Especially in gynecology, they're all reusable and they have to be sharpened and maintained and autoclaved and repackaged and restocked. So we said, well, instead of cutting tissue, leaving a crater or shaving tissue with a sharp curette, can we frictionally remove tissue and have the patient care experience be superior or at least equal to what a gentle debridement would be. And also, can we take specimens? Is there a place for taking specimens in wounds? And in fact, there is, as I'll show you. The innovation is Kylon on the upper right. You can see these hooks. They are different than Velcro. It kind of resembles Velcro. They are woven into uh, nylon fabric. And uh, these are upright naturally, but when you press them into the tissue firmly, like you would press a toothbrush, doing a toothbrushing that's moderate in pressure, you'll flatten those hooks. And instead of having a candy cane shape, they have more of a sickle shape and the geometry and the softness of the bristles is a little different. So when it's flattened, it actually creates points that can poke into the tissue and work like little micro curettes. So the friction, frictional tips penetrate, then they rake. You can use a raking motion, you can use a twisting motion. I'll show you that in, in a second. But they can gently remove or excise necrotic tissue and slough, and there, there's a lot of patents behind this technology now. We've gone from invasive to minimally invasive, and uh, this is the historical examples that, you know, that we know whereas no one gets a large incision to have their gallbladder removed anymore. It's all laparoscopic. And uh, there's uh, endoscopic procedures instead of doing more major invasive procedures now. So we're trying to convert the wound biopsies you do and the debridements that you do to a more minimally invasive approach. The devices are called soft biopsy, which is solely focused towards taking samples of a usually a debrided wound at the base, which I'll explain to you, soft k -ret, which Dr. Schneider said he's used. Podiatrists like this because it's great for the web spaces. The fabric is parallel to the handle, as you'll see, uh, where you can, it looks a little bit like a hook toothbrush with a little pointy end to it. Soft K-cut, which is a finger cut that is deployed on the finger. Um, and it's got an impeccable quality and safety re record. Um, they're single-use disposable. They're not reusable. You can't re-autoclave these. They're, they're plastic or they're um, nitrile finger cots with the fabric attached. And the historical price is 
is over five dollars, but Taylor Medical has brought the price down for you on their order site um, significantly. In the OBGYN space and in the wound care space, we're seeing over 80, close to 85% reorder rate. So when people convert to minimally invasive, they usually like it, They're, and especially their patients don't fear it. Uh, I'm a former director of the Southern California Permanente Medical Group, which is part of Kaiser Permanente. I uh, oversaw the quality program for all of our specialties, not just OBGYN, uh, on a committee, which I was a chair. And the thing, the mantra is we want quality. We want value. And you know, value-based healthcare is kind of emerging. We're, Kaiser had started that, you know, about 30, 40 years ago. And uh, our, our focus is how can we get the best quality with the best service, with great access to care and do it affordably. So that's what we're looking for. Quality is patient safety, better, better outcomes, service is the patient and the provider experience and access is throughput. So as a busy podiatrist going on rounds at a facility, you wanna get through the cases and you wanna get back to your office or you wanna get through your office practice or you wanna give something to your staff that's gonna be effective and efficient. And I think this is what we're providing. As far as these in the FDA, these are class one 510K exempt products that have multiple registrations. The Kylon fabric is a brush, a biopsy brush when it's upright. So it's a cleaning brush. It is a um, curette, an array of micro curettes when it's flattened. So it's registered as a curette. It's also registered, registered, registered as a tissue trap container because you, as you'll see when you trap tissue within the array of hooks, it stays in, and then the, the tips or the cot can detach from your finger or the tips can detach from the handle. And basically you can drop that in a vial and send it to a lab. We're gonna talk a, bit, a little bit about that in the talk about the value of using biopsies for doing things like uh, molecular testing or culture of wounds. Up the upper left is the 19th to 20th century metal instruments we use in gynecology. And on the right are the three devices we use for the cervix. And you can see if we press it on a lesion and take it away, we trap tissue in the bottom right. And we leave a small, very minimally micropunctate bleeding site on the cervix. It's been very attractive that there's not a lot of bleeding control or discussion of failure to follow up because of a bad experience. It's been, that's why people are reordering. I think on the right, you see the reusable or disposable tools you use for excisional debridement, surgical debridement, not a selective debridement. And then you see the two, two devices that are on the market now. I'll show you at the end a little bit of what's coming, but the first two are the finger cut and the web space debrider, which happens to be the same device, so a similar device to what we use for the endocervical canal. And you can see it deployed on a wound to take a biopsy and the finger cut on the bottom, which I'm gonna show you videos in a little bit. These are what you're using now. Do we think they're gonna just go away? No. When you have a solid tissue, you need to use cutting tools. When you have very fibrotic tissue, a plastic hook, a sickle hook, it may not, may take too long to excise away tissue. So for expediency, yet the patient care experience being more aggressive, you need these. And if you ever need to take a punch biopsy where you need an architecturally intact cylinder, you use the punch biopsy. But if you need a biopsy that can accept shavings or curettings, you can use our product. So we don't replace a cylindrical punch biopsy. So for skin lesions, that require a punch, you still use it. This is what our devices look like today. The top is the soft biopsy. You can see the fabric on the right is attached at a right angle to a trumpet shaped tip. And on the bottom is the K-RET, which is a diamond shaped pad on the end of a applicator that really fits nice into crevices as you, do, as you wipe away and debris them. Uh, let's talk about the soft biopsy first. If you're going to order it, it's SFT1000. It covers almost a half an inch in diameter. It'll excavate the tissue and collect it simultaneously. And you're going to target lesions and you're going to press in there and you're going to try to excavate out biofilm laden tissue. Uh, this is for diagnostics. Culture, if you need a biopsy to rule out neoplasia, understand it will trap curettings. It's easily removed in the lab. 
the curetting from the tip. You can see towards the end, there's a little notch marker. You'll see where we snap it off in the next video. So it's pressed on the left and wiped with the upright hooks just to do some gentle brushing. But then when you press it and rotate it and twist it, suddenly you're getting this force that will shave away pieces of disrupted epithelium from necrotic tissue for either a biopsy or to, we, we don't use this one for debridement, but there will be a similar one coming out in that shape that will be for debridement in the near future. So now I'm gonna show you a couple of uh, examples. That's a key turning motion with moderate pressure. Uh, that was a venous ulcer. This is a mixed diabetic foot ulcer that's already been debrided. And now she is taking the focal biopsy, showing you that she's got tissue and trapped in the array of hooks. And that's just a demonstration of what you do next. You'd snap it off. That's for histology, but this one is for molecular testing. So the wound biopsy goes to the lab. So your goal is to get tissue trapped in the hooks and leave micropunctate bleeding behind. Micropunctate bleeding for wound bases is actually quite good, as you know. As Dr. Schneider talked about the granulation tissue, uh, it's actually optimal for things like placing skin substitutes. There'll be a abstract presented by uh, Dr. Tracy Kimball about micro perforation of wounds to bring in blood flow to help heal wounds. Um, that's her presentation. It includes our product, but it shows different methodologies to do that. So you're snapping the tip off and you're making sure you've collected and you're going to put it in a vial. So you'd ask, well, what is that? That is a biopsy procedure, but the end result is also a biopsy. So biopsy is actually a verb and a noun. Biopsy is a procedure when you do it. It's a specimen when you obtain it. And although it's a biopsy, it doesn't mean it's going for histopathology. As you'll see in my talk about uh, the, the evidence, biopsy tissue is the gold standard for things like culture and DNA testing. So press, twist, try not to contaminate if it's going for culture, drop it in the vial. What's the um, clinical efficiency? This is a tangential biopsy. So when you bill and code for this, as you'll see, it's gonna be for tangential or curatage. This is not a punch. So the 11102 and 11103 CPT codes are relevant. You can really, really control how deep you go. Sometimes with a punch, you're shaving curette, you're say, darn, I've just shaved off some healing tissue. Oh my gosh, it's bleeding. I've got a crater, I've got to heal, you know, I've got to put pressure on that. There's a lot more um, control. One of the plastic surgeons who helped me innovate this said, I feel like I'm doing Mohs surgery uh, on wounds. In other words, I'm taking layers off to the depth I want to take them off. Uh, Kylan tr can trap all the tissue and it's uh, the, the tips go to the lab, but the handles are medically recyclable acrylic pl plastic should you want to have a green office and try to recycle some of your disposable plastics. Uh, the patient care experience, remember we went through access, quality and uh, service. Well, on the service side, you want compliance to care. You don't want patients to fear you. They don't fear, fear the little plastic brush. They don't fear the finger coated with the cot. And uh, in the women's health side, there's, there's evidence to show that uh, there's less pain and bleeding with the women's health side in the published abstracts. Uh, we haven't, it's pretty common sense when you use these in wounds, you'll notice right away the approach is more minimally invasive. The patient care experience they describe as gentler because it's more brief, it's gentler as well. And you're getting a pretty wide area of debridement as opposed to those focal sharp instruments your fingertip, your fingerprint is pretty large when you do a debridement. You can get through it faster. Uh, let's move to the soft biopsy and the evidence I talked about why biopsy tissue is important when you're trying to figure out what's wrong with the wound regarding biofilm. Uh, back in 2010, the interest in PCR became, or poly, you know, polymerase, polymerase chain reaction 
testing of wounds started to become interesting to the clinical world, to the labs. And the reason that they were moving to it is something can happen to a wound in five days when you're waiting for the culture to come back. And uh, this was like, hey, we can do this in a day. And why don't we do it in a day? Because a day matters. So that's why these things start to go. They realized that they needed to get a deeper specimen to get to the biofilm. And that's exactly what Robeson and Stotts taught. Robeson basically said, we compared swabs to biopsy tissue as far as the accuracy of the culture and whether they grew and it was the gold standard. And the Stotts article said, you need to get to the viable wound base, that it's, you gotta get through the necrotic slough. So you need to get under that either with a needle or pressing the Levine swab technique deep enough, but really it's not as good, but it's more compassionate. So maybe we should do that. There was a lot of confusion there, I think. Yeah, even though biopsies are better, we, we don't wanna be that aggressive. So maybe we can get away doing these other things. Uh, this study by Armand compared the Levine swab to the culture and they said the Z swab was intended to get below the base, but it's just not quite as accurate as doing the culture of the tissue biopsy itself. And the European Society of Clinical Microbiology and Infectious Disease in 2014, they also said biopsy tissues are considered the most reliable samples for biofilm, period. Why? Because there's anaerobes down there and the antibiotic sensitivity of the tissue that's obtained really requires tissue versus swabs to be as robust as it needs to be. So to breed the wound, sample the base. This was also uh, confirmed by the consensus guidelines by Gregory Schultz and colleagues that was published in Wound Repair Regeneration for the Wound Healing Society back in 2017. And they said, biofilm's down there. It's not on the surface and you gotta get there. And they did not, Dr. Schultz now works with us as a consultant, but uh, I, when I met him and I showed him the evidence, he said, you know what? We, we always felt curettings were the way to go. It was broader. We don't wanna have focal punch biopsies you've just described what we thought was optimal and and i never ever saw your product before so so he made the recommendation before he ever saw our product which was very uh gr grateful i was very grateful that someone had the perception like that to figure out what was optimal um the question also is if you're going to shave away a whole bunch of tissue on a biopsy are you affecting the wound healing and this study by penunselman says no there's a poster from last year's SAWC fall exactly showing that if you take the biopsy from the post-debrided wound base and you send it to the lab, the lower left, you can see the tissue fragments. We had to prove that they're actually histopathology samples, not swabs. And then the, the actual poster uh, is the report from the molecular lab that read the specimen and it's exceptionally strong signaling with a very robust uh, antibiotic sensitivity. At the bottom, there were anaerobes identified as well. This is up on our website, along with every, mostly everything I'm showing you today. The next and last part of the talk before I do the summary is let's talk about the finger cut. I always say patients can fear the scalpel, but they hardly ever fear the finger. Um, the idea is that this is supposed to be very versatile. So those hooks, when pressed very gently and paint brushed across a wound, provide the kind of wound hygiene that I'll show you the billing and coding for that an assistant would do who's not an advanced wound care provider. It can be used by you too, you podiatrist, you can be used for any surgical specialty if you don't need a deep debridement. It's just about how you bill and code for each level of pressure you apply to the wound. So pressurized sweeping where you flatten the hooks is now raking tissue. It's not deep cutting, but it's raking the tissue. And then when you pressurize, flatten and twist, and you'll see it in the video, we'll use a banana as an example, you'll see that. Um, uh, clearing the wound bed for a biopsy is key, uh, but it's also key 
for maybe putting a skin substitute. You want to get a very clean wound. This probability a skin substitute will take is not only based on the product, it's based on your prep. So we're trying to give a standardized way to prep a, a wound base. You're trying to get micropunctate bleeding in wounds that are really not well vascularized. If you can stimulate some bleeding, that's important. And with the frictional uh, pressing and twisting and punt, you know pressing it into the wound, you're going to penetrate deep enough to get some of that microcapillary bleeding. But again, always keep it in view. Don't put it in a tunnel. Uh, you always want to see the black particular, you know, the black fabric. Because I'll go over that at the end, but you want to make sure it's always in view so you don't lose sight of it. And it's not going to really shave off the very solid stuff. You're going to still need a sharp. Things that are exceptionally long-standing and highly fibrotic, it can work, but it's not going to be efficient, and we don't recommend it. So I think I'll, I'll show the video. It's going to play something, and I'm going to hear it. But I think I'm going to do it this way, just to keep the flow. So the purpose of this video is to describe the versatility of the soft cake cut as a hydrogen mechanical breathing device or surgical device or biopsy tool. The soft cake cut has fabric on the tip that when upright behaves like a brush. When pressed flat, exposes the tip. The, um, become micro threads. It's about a 50 the tip of this device. Cuts rolled on the finger and it's used for debridement. If it's loose, you can put the thumb underneath the pad itself to anchor the hooks. And then you do a light or mechanical debridement, non selective debridement, so wiping. That debris is the slough from the wound, as you can see. It captures the slough within the hook array. It has the ability to do this very efficiently. See how large the face is? You hit an area that's semi-solid, not solid, but let's say gummy, or more solid. You can actually press your finger in with enough pressure to really flatten the hooks, and then you twist your, your wrist and you're actually excavating. And that is excisional sharp, like sharp debridement. And there's a crater formed in that area. And that's done intentionally. Then you can wipe the, the excavated slough, and you've got yourself a nice debridement there where you're doing some, uh, let's say, dermal debridement, maybe getting into some subtube. That, when it's light, we call it light wound hygiene. When it's deeper, we call it selective debridement. So wound hygiene and normal and non-selective debridement are similar. I'm going to show you two more videos. Uh, one of a mixed um, semi-solid wound slough with a mixed diabetic foot ulcer with some crusting. So that's not a totally solid wound. And you'll see how that's debrided. And then I'll show you a venous ulcer where they decided to deploy the finger cut on their thumb. Now you may say, well, I got this really giant decubitus in a patient, or I've got a really large foot ulcer. Or, you know, I really need something even bigger. And you can just use two of them. You just use it on your index and middle finger, and you've got twice the surface area. We are considering making a scrub brush with this fabric. We're going to see how it goes and see how the demand for, for, di for podiatrists, though. The single finger is probably optimal for most cases. Sometime you, you're going to use the paddle, and then we have a new one coming out in a, probably early next year, and I'll show you that. So here's the diabetic foot ulcer with some crusting, and the they didn't need to use their thumb to anchor the pad because their their finger is thick enough that the, the, the finger cut doesn't wobble. And you can see they're using the moderate pressure brushing method. So they're pushing into the dermis, uh, removing. This is not just uh, surface slough. They're getting a little, see, they're going a little deeper to get some of the deeper um, material off the wound, not just the crust at the top, the necrosis. 
So this would be a selective debridement into dermis uh, with moderate pressure. Uh, this one is a, a diabetic foot ulcer, excuse me, a venous ulcer, and the surgeon decided she wanted to use her finger and she's lightly sweeping the tissue off. This is the non-selective wound hygiene method. See, there's no pressure, it's just light paint brushing. This could be done by a myriad of practice providers, not, and there's three skin islands there she's avoiding. So she's showing you that she's not disrupting the healing tissue. Um, Dr. Bruce Levine and I did a poster at the last spring saucy showing how in the middle you can see the toe uh, has some necrotic slough uh, at the base and it's been debrided with the soft K-RET and it's nice and clean on the lower left. And if you need to take a sample, you should you, once you've debrided it, you should use a fresh device to take a sample. The slough will confound biofilm results. That's the whole reason for debriding before you biopsy. But in the bottom right, they wanted a histology biopsy and they're able to shave it off and snap the tip off and put it in the vial. So handle devices. The top device, this was a question that was asked uh, before, what, how do these differ? The, the top one is for the web space, it's parallel to the handle. We're going to come out with a device that's a little different that is going to be perpendicular handle. It's gonna be very light purple and it's gonna be for micro debridement. And then on the bottom, we've got one that's shaped like a scalpel with a flat perpendicular brace that curves over like a scalpel blade would be. That's called K soft K-Bride, and that's coming probably early next year. But in the meantime, you've got plenty to use to help patients. And we've got plenty of stuff on our website, both on the OBGYN side at histologics.com and on the histologicswc.com website with published papers and abstracts. There's eight in women's health and four in wound care. We were privileged to be able to give a presentation uh, to the Pentagon a couple of years ago about limb salvage and doing great debridements and trying to save limbs with this as well. Uh, there's a, another video presentation like this on our website. It's on the homepage. It's about 16 to 18 minutes and it's chopped up into segments because some of it, you just want a reminder like billing and coding or something like that. So this is something that Dr. Jeffrey Lehrman who was an original co-host of this webinar uh, helped uh, devise for us. And I'm just gonna go through this pretty quickly. Um, if you're gonna do a biopsy of an already debrided wound, there is a CPT code, it's 11102 and 11103. Up on our website, there's a pretty great uh, review of what the reimbursements are on the video that I just showed you. It's also up there for the biopsy side of this about what the reimbursements are and they're pretty generous and these are $5 devices. So I think uh, you're doing a very meaningful thing with a better evidence. And uh, it's up to you whether you want the simplicity of doing this or not. Hopefully we, you agree with us. Uh, if you go into an institution and you say, you know, do why, uh, we, we want wound hygiene on this and uh, get some finger cots or some K brides, or excuse me, or some uh, K rats and keep this wound clean, but don't cut into it. That's 97602. And that's you're instructing the institutional providers who are not advanced wound care providers to just keep the wound clean. That's it. So they're not, they're gonna be doing the light paint brush method. That's why these things are so versatile. Um, if you're gonna go into uh, a dermis um, and you're going to do non-selective debridement on the dermis, that's the 97598 reimbursement. That reimbursement amount is about the same as the 11102, 11103. You can't combine billing for a dermal debridement or any, any surgical debridement and a biopsy simultaneously. But if you think of it this way, if you're keeping the wound clean and it's not healing and it's clean, you can do the biopsy at a session and you can bill for it. But if you have to debride surgically and then get the specimen, you have to choose which one you're gonna bill for. And they're pretty similar. 
but that's pretty much the way it is. And the, there's many molecular labs out there. Some of you work with them. There's uh, obviously in institutions where they don't have it, standard culture will benefit from a tissue sample versus a swab. And then as you get deeper into the tissue, you know that there's debridement into subcutaneous tissue, into muscle, and into bone. There is no way this is going to debride bone. It's probably not going to be very efficient in debriding muscle because muscle probably at that level with that chronicity is going to be more fibrotic. But subcutaneous and dermal, these top two codes, it's very relevant to your practice. Again, we have a, a treatise, we have a review up there by Dr. Lerman, and I have a summary up on our resources tab on our histologicswc.com page. Please review it because it's very helpful as you go through the versatile uses of this product. So in summary, we've got the biopsy device above, the finger cut in the middle, and the K-RET on the bottom. These are for selective surgical debridement on the bottom, for biopsy only on the top and in the middle. The soft K-cut, you can actually take a second soft K-cut and biopsy a very large area and drop that fabric tip, you know, snip it off with a scissor or, or just drop the whole cut into a culture medium and send it in if you want a larger, but you got to use a fresh one. The other thing that I would um, be very, very uh, wary of is especially for the blue device on the bottom. Originally, we thought it might be good for tunneling wounds, but we found that it's you know, tunneling wounds could have some very solid areas in the, the bottom, and and if this with a lot of friction, uh, you can uh, you can uh, lose a hook potentially or a piece of particle. And we don't want anything in a wound that you can't see that you can't clean off. We made these purposefully black, so they're very uh, easy. When you do wet to dry dressings and you put gauze pads on wounds and you peel them off, sometimes the threads stick to the wound and you have to clean it off. It's this is a fabric, even though it's a stiffer nylon fabric, um, and uh, I wanted you to, to understand that. Um, the other thing is the finger cut, especially, it comes in a package that you peel off and it's got a little bulb at the bottom, like a little receptacle. You can fill that with sterile saline and if it gets gummed up and you don't think it's working, you can actually place your finger in there. So you avoid spraying particulate while you're cleaning off the fabric hooks. Don't clean the fabric hooks in the air. Use a package that it comes in and peel it, put some fluid in there and then just rub it off into the fluid. Throw away the the package into your uh, contaminated specimen container that's bio, bio for bio waste. And then uh, you can go back and use it one more time. We don't advise cleaning this out more than once. If you need, if you have a tremendously large wound and you have to do it multiple times, use a, use a second instrument. So in conclusion, uh, Kylan fabric allows for minimally invasive tissue care biopsy and debridement. And biopsy is the standard of care for wound-based culture and molecular testing, especially for biofilm. This is really not designed to take skin biopsies. Some people in podiatry have thought about using it in, for the nail. Uh, you can do scrapings and you can do things like fungal testing with special stains for histology. I've had people use it. If, if you're using curettings, you can consider it. And it it, it is a minimally invasive approach versus shaving off with a sharp curator of scalpel. Um, you'll see your patients will thank you for taking a minimally invasive approach. And the fact that this is so versatile, you can't say, oh, it's a scalpel, it's for surgery. Oh, it's a Debrisaw, for instance. Oh, it's not, it's for, you know, wound hygiene. No, this is like the multi-purpose, quote unquote, Swiss army knife of debridement devices. You can use it multiple ways in different scenarios. And it's always present because it's single use disposable and you're never gonna run out as long as you have a supply. And patients won't fear the finger. And at $5, we believe it's very cost effective. That $5 price was negotiated by Taylor for you. It's uh, below our price, as you can see. So in the questions and answers, since this uh, has come through before, there's a couple of uh, questions. Um, I already purchased some sharp instruments like curettes, iotoclave, some disposable ones, including scalpels. Why would I consider this? Well, you consider it because an autoclave, you know, uh, a particulate sticks to an instrument. Even if you are autoclave it, you can cross contaminate into the next case. So I think people are moving away from reusables and wound care. In GYN, we're stuck with them, but in wound care, we're not. And they're, they're now disposable alternatives. Some of them are coming from China. 
China quality, you know, um, I've even seen some people try to autoclave these disposables that aren't supposed to be autoclaved just to save a few cents. I think it's foolish in the sense the same particulates can stick to those. And then if you cross contaminate somebody with an infectious disease, it's not good. So that's why you'd move to the single use disposable fabric base. And because of the value equation I taught you already. Um, I said, I, I do non-selective debris and simply clean the surface prior to biopsy for biofilm. Is that better care? Can I still buy bill for the biopsy CPT code? If you're not billing for the debridement because it's just wiping off the slough using the non-selective method and then you go and biopsy it, that takes you five seconds to clean the slough off. And then you go ahead and biopsy, yes, that's billable because you're not billing. You don't bill for non-selective debridement, only facilities bill for non-selective debridement. So one scenario might be on day one, you have the institution clean the wound and dress it. And then the next day you come in and bill for it as a podiatrist. Uh, it's clean already. Uh, how does Kylon fabric convert from a sickle hook brush to a series of micro curettes? Simple by pressing the fabric down to the base. The tips stick up and they stick up as an array. And when you press it in, it's like pressing in 50 in your finger cut. It's like pressing in 50 consecutive blunt needles into the skin, into the wound, all at the same time, evenly spaced standardized uh when can i use soft bio to take a biopsy can i use soft biopsy to take a uh biopsy sample um i think that that question we answered already what's the difference between the use of soft biopsy and the other two devices soft biopsy is a lab supply type device you can buy it the labs possibly would buy it and we sell it to you um the key is that it's making a round trip. It's going from us or Taylor or the lab to you and back to the lab. It's simply a specimen collecting device at this point. We're not advocating it for, for, for debridement yet. We have another device coming out so, called, so, called soft biopsy D that's less sort of like a micro debrider. It's a little stronger than the hooks that we use for simple soft biopsy. So how are these different, devices made a difference in gynecology and how many biopsies have been done? How do you see this change affect what we do in podiatry? Well, nobody knew about fabric-based biopsy five years ago, and now it's slowly becoming the preferred standard of care. You know, this is a, quote, disruptive technology, literally and figuratively. It disrupts tissue with friction, but it's also disruptive to the status quo, which is sharp instruments, so it takes time. We all train using sharps, so we have to have a change of mindset and medicine resists change, so it's gonna take a little time. Well, we're approaching 2 million biopsies now and uh, some pretty prestigious places you would recognize are using this and they're reordering it regularly and all the way down to the basic practices all over the country that even solo GYN practices are using it, all the way up to clinics, HMOs, academic facilities, the government, the VA, the military, the National Institutes of Health. So I'm very proud of that. And now we're seeing it. I think it's going to emerge in podiatry faster because podiatrists see the practicality of it. Very practical, very efficient. They want value for what they're buying. They want ability to get reimbursed when they're doing surgical procedures. And I think we have that. So with that, I'm going to stop and unshare my screen if I can. And I want to thank you all for attending this webinar.